Hey everybody, welcome back to Muramasa the Demon's Blade. Uh, we're all the way in another district that I can never remember the name of. Thankfully we've got our portable boyfriend with us. So yeah, um, the bag of holding is Budai's bottomless bag. If you've ever been to a restaurant and saw a Buddha statue sitting at the front, that is Budai with his bottomless bag. I just appreciate the alliteration, it makes me really happy for some reason. Oh my god, I never know- <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that was really good. But yeah, I got a couple interesting things. I improved the child form's dive attack and I got a, um... I got the ability to take the baseball move and aim it downward. So I could atomic spike it and get a rain of fireballs with it. I was gonna say, I noticed you had a lot of things you didn't have before. <laughs> Yeah, the big thing about uh, the DLC is that there's not a lot of room to work with because you only technically have three levels. So what I like to do is I go and grind every area I go through in order to get levels so I don't get fucking owned. That's a pretty smart thing to do, actually. I think that's what they expect you to do because bosses are way more harder if you don't do that. Oh, yes, more harder, I see. It's more harder. I'm good at English, I swear. I never would have guessed. I don't know what these angels were thinking when they see this little demon child transform before them and they, before them and they didn't run away. Look, they thought they could take her, okay? I'm trying desperately I to get this ability. With that ability, if I eat anything for the duration of my uh, fullness meter, I have increased attack power. Oh, Jesus Christ. Raj is so wonderful to play. So that sounds really abusable. Kinda? In um, the DLCs, they counteract this by giving you a lot more... They give you limited healing items, and any renewable ones are a lot harder to get because money doesn't come easy. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, though I can appreciate Raj, of all people, having an entire ability dedicated to just eating. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's very fitting for her, even if it's never an explicit thing. Uh, is there an explanation I'm not aware of? Because, uh... No, it just, she seems like the kind that would just love to eat. Ah, I see. Um, an interesting thing to note, I didn't get the recordings because, uh... Quite frankly, I'm just trying to finish this thing off. Um, when you eat at a restaurant or cook a hot pot as a Rajaki, you actually get dual dialogue from both her and a Seikichi. Which is a neat little touch. It gives it kind of more of that air of, um... It gives it an earnest air, like it's not a game so much as a fun story you're watching. God, now I just like to imagine her just shoveling the food into the bottomless bag. That's Never actually letting the portable boyfriend out, no. I, that's actually an interesting thing. Um, if you go to a restaurant, they um, actually have two lines that are Seikichi trying to um, both disguise Rajaki and teach her, hey, we gotta pay for that. Come on. <laughs> also, I don't like fighting monks. I mean, that does sound like the kind of thing that would be a pain as a demon. It also doesn't help that they have a lot of um, hyper armor frames, so if you hit them, they still get their attacks off. Oh god, that is gross. And I, I think at this point, I in the recordings, I kind of learned, like, you know, Raj builds up meter really fast. Yeah, so it's just better to play it safe. This is like, might as well, got it, might as well use it. I'll have one for the boss. So a big thing about this uh, game is that the platforming is mainly meant to get you currencies. I've mentioned this several times before, but I feel like I should explain again for you. Um, you level up by getting souls from both enemies and the level, and that's how you get the skills that we saw earlier. Hmm. It's a... You might say it's a bit like Demon Souls, but it's not as uh, in-depth. Really... I know, I Really, the soul is just a currency that you pick up, much like a uh, Mullen and Spirit. Yeah. At the very least, though, it looks like it feels pretty good, so... 
if nothing else. I kind of appreciate it. I was talking with this with uh, Toddy in the um, in the last DLC. This game does a good job of having RPG elements, but not being overly dependent on numbers. So you could have multiple currencies like Mon, Spirit, and uh, Souls, but they they're not complex in any way. They're just a way of saying, "Hey, you need X to get there. You should do this." If you want to get the skill, you should probably eat some. Uh, you should probably eat some sushi or something. If you want to get the skill, you should probably murder a bunch of frogs. And so they're basically there to to complement the gameplay, but not be the focus. Yes. Which is very, just nice and actually works for this style of game a lot. Yeah, yeah, going back to that uh, fullness skill I got, I actually make a lot of use of it. Because I did a lot, I did a fair bit of grinding before getting to this specific level, so I just went and said, you know, I'm gonna get some dirt cheap cooking ingredients, and then I'm just gonna cook throughout this whole level. I mean, it's effective, if nothing else. It also doesn't help that this enemy has this area has a lot of frogs, which are, quite frankly, the worst enemy in the game. Oh? They very rarely, if ever, hit stun. They cause poison, and they're really good at breaking your weapon. No, oh, good, perfect. I mean, frogs have always been a terrible enemy in basically every game. Yeah. One of my favorite frogs ever is Grimrock 2, where they could actually steal your weapon. <laughs> I always preferred the frogs from, say, Resident Evil Zero, where they eat you wholesale. It's great. I don't think I've played Resident Evil Zero. That's the one with, um... Do not play it! Do not ever play it, actually! <laughs> I was gonna say, is Resident Evil Zero the one with Jessica and the, uh, criminal? Uh, no, it's, um... Oh god, I forget her name. It's not Jessica, but yes, it, it's the criminal in, in that, What's Her Face. That is Jessica, isn't it? It's the, uh, medic gal. Yeah, I don't think it's Jessica. I don't fucking know anymore. I just, yeah, a friend of mine, uh, Real Soviet Bear, he, he did an LP of it, and my god, that game is just atrocious. Hmm. I saw someone else's LP, and it looked alright. It seems alright initially, and that is the issue. Hmm. I'm guessing in pre when you actually get behind the controller, it's kind of a slog. Uh, yes, and also when you go over an hour without a save point and get killed by an instant kill enemy, you cannot see. Oh. Beforehand. Like, the frog I mentioned. Okay. I want to say that's part player fault, but if it's a enemy that they actively hide and can one-shot you, that's a little sketch. Well, the other thing is, um, in certain areas, when it gets you, uh, the stun, like, because you're stunned before you can actually sort of start shooting at it. Um... The stun is so long that you can't actually fire back enough to kill the frog before you get devoured. Sheesh. Video games are good, I swear. I know, that's why I'm playing one right now. <laughs> yeah, an actually good one. Yeah, I'm so glad that the, uh... I'm so glad that the DLC came out, because it's really fun. Yeah, I just... She's also adorable, and it's fun watching her jump around. Like an idiot. It's fun watching her spin a hammer forever just to kill everyone. Like, like, Raj is a pretty neat character. I'm enjoying her so far. Uh, you probably wouldn't have liked the last DLC where the main character was basically, um, a 90s cartoon protagonist where he's trying to- trying so hard to be cool. <laughs> I would have loved that, actually. <laughs> ah, well, you should probably watch that then. I probably should. We also got our gratuity accessories. Perfect. The DLC, since it's basically a truncated version of the main game, you only get a few accessories. Good, I I'm glad this this small demon child now has sweet rice wine. <laughs> well, that's... Isn't that a thing? Like, I remember seeing that in, like, DBZ or something. Yeah, I mean, it's also a good cooking ingredient. Yes, yeah, so you get a lot of sweet rice and wine and a hell of infinite losers. <laughs> oh no, it's Hall of Infinite Losers. No, it's it's, it's not Hall, it's um... I know it's hell, but the localization was Like you can't Home for Infinite Losers. Oh, that is it. That's it, yeah. And just they they got rid of hell by cutting off the <laughs> bottom of an L. <laughs> 
<laughs> in the bottom of an E. Oh, that's the stupidest thing. I almost want to put it in video in post just to show that <laughs> for no particular reason. Just the home for infinite losers is a beautiful thing, and I love it. What? Isn't there a movie where it was canon that the, hall for, the home for infinite losers gets fucking usurped? Because it was filled with people that Goku killed? Yes, actually. Oh, man, that's kind of... I don't of... think it was a movie. I think it was just a, a filler bit. Ah, oh, damn. Because that seems like a... That seems like that would be a plot point that would need to be addressed. Or was it Garlic Jr. or something like that? I don't remember. I haven't watched, like, anything DBZ in... Garlic Jr. Ages. was one of the early ones. I think the, Hall for, the Home for Infinite Losers Overflow was a way later one. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. DBC is weird. It's but, weird because Akira Toriyama can't write for shit. Yeah. I mean, you say that, but Goku trying to get his driver's license was fucking hilarious. That... that's true, actually, yeah. It's just, I... do not like Akira Toriyama at all, so... Ah. I don't mind that him. Is, he made Chrono I, Trigger. I... let's not talk about my opinions on Chrono Trigger. <laughs> Anyways, Everyone back said. to the plot. Oh boy. Welcome to Kai District. <laughs> so an interesting thing that you kind of brought up when you said the bottomless bag, um... The bottomless bag here is, um... Oxygen supported, which is amusing because... Typically in uh, tabletop RPGs, anything like a bag of holding is... Kept in a vacuum. So, if that were the case, and that bag didn't have oxygen, Seikichi should be fucking dead. Yeah. I mean, that's assuming that when you open it up, it just doesn't come flush with air from the outside. That's true. If it's actually straight up vacuum. What I'm saying is, it's better they did it this way, because overthinking it only makes it really weird and head hurting. Yeah. Plus, this is meant to be a DLC of goofiness, so there's they don't worry about those semantics. Ah oh, yes, just Raj opening up her bottomless bag only for a corpse to come out. Oh no, husband! The bottomless boyfriend bag. <laughs> oh no. That'd be awful. <laughs> I feel like that should have been a plot element in Scott Pilgrim. I, I kinda want to punch Seikachi for that line. Oh, what do you say? I missed it. Um, part of being a good wife is listening to your husband. Oh, yeah, yeah. Seikichi's not a likable character. I know, and that's why he's kind of great. Because Raj is the perfect foil to him. Mm -hmm. I love how there's an echo in his uh, thought, like there's nothing up there. I mean, it's fitting, isn't it? Yeah. Also, look at this! Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, um... Before we recorded this episode, we were talking a lot about Vanillaware's, uh... Art direction at times? Her spine is, like, snapped in fucking half! <laughs> there is actually a reason for this exaggerated design, which I think is really clever, because when I first saw this, I thought, Oh, come on, guys. I'm just, I'm glad that instead of getting away, or like going to his parents, no, he just immediately thinks of his dick. Um, I believe it's mentioned earlier in the first episode, he doesn't actually have parents there, he's just bullshitting, like he always does. Yes, but he just walked away from the kid, and the first thing he does is think with oh, his yeah. dick. In that case, yeah. <laughs> Seikichi's a simple man. He only wants one thing. I remember when I first saw this character's name, Oye. I could not stop laughing at that name. Oh my god. Ah, uh, Seikichi, you're the best. I just love his massive brow, it's so perfect. 
He looks like a fucking ape. I said it before, but good lord. You know, Seikichi, all these skulls around you aren't the least bit suspicious in any capacity. Yeah, weird about that, right? You know, the, the, the fog hanging low. Ah, uh, that's just the weather, dude. They live near a river, it naturally gets foggy. <laughs> this design is fucking great. Oh, Jesus Christ. I love the knives in the huge fucking head. And the single the blood red eye. Those are the things it draws attention to, yes. Well, nothing else. Everything else speaks for itself, okay? <laughs> uh, it is a good ass design, though, for, you know, a mountain witch. Yeah, it's definitely different. Like, I wasn't expecting this. And Raj is still blissfully unaware, and it's great. So, the, um,. The Mountain Witch fight, really fun when you know what to do, but she has a lot of moves where if you're caught off guard, it is a very high chance of either stun locking you or doing enough damage to kill you in one hit. No, that's, that's good. There is also one interesting property about the Mountain Witch, which I think I, I uh, show off in a minute. The property is that her head is a platform. Huh. Right here. This is intended design. Yeah, to avoid the poison. It's also, um, a trap by design because she has a lot of moves that exploit the fact that you're on top of her head. I mean, that's, that makes sense, actually. That's a good encounter, Zach. Mm -hmm. Once you, um, once you know what to do and which is just go into adult mode, adult mode and just not stop, Mountain Witch is not that hard. But if you don't, like, here's an attack right here that could get you pretty hard. When she throws the knives, it could do damage. And if you're in the wrong spot, you could get hit by, like, all five or six. I believe the knives also become projectiles eventually. Yep, there we go. This is why Child is overpowered. Yeah, holy crap, she's a juggling fiend. Mm-hmm. This is actually a uh, juggle that you normally see in the main game, which is why I mentioned Child is Overpowered. She could do the air juggle combo and keep someone in the air forever. Also, since oh, I'm good. invincible here, I don't care. Hammer extension. <laughs> yeah, I think all the new moves you got, actually. They're all really neat. I don't think I show... This is one of the moves where if you're on her head, you could die instantly. Yeah, well, holy shit. Luckily, I was guarding, so I only just resulted in a guard break. But that thing, oof. That got me the first time, and I learned my lesson. That's yeah, another that's one. Mighty rude. A lot of her moves are just basically the developers are where, yeah, we made her hit a platform. Now we're going to punish you for it. I mean, it makes sense. It's a good way of handling things, honestly. Because otherwise it would be very easily abusable. Oof, wow, that's... what... Okay, <laughs> I was actually wondering, what am I doing? Holy shit. What you were doing is getting incredibly lucky. I th I'm pretty sure I knew what I was doing at the time, but that was two months ago and I don't know what that was now. I do not think you could have seen that, that hair bit coming. Also, if you saw before, I did the um, fireball bit where she aims it down and makes a rain of fire. Yep, you've been doing that for a while now. It's really neat, actually. The only thing I haven't shown off is, um... Child Mode has a move where if you spam, uh, crouch and attack, you could- There we go. You could basically become a blender, but I got caught off guard there. So I didn't get to finally, show off. Finally, I can achieve my dream of being a Beyblade. Yes. I was Wrong trying- yes. I was trying really hard to kill her with that shot. Oh, well. <laughs> Look, it's a baseball, okay? I wanted to get it in one shot, but it just wasn't enough, so I just did a follow-up. Now we it's actually just, get I'm to glad. Now we actually get to see what um Rajaki is actually doing. Because she actually has purpose. 
だなガキちゃんオラをただの鬼のこと思うなこう見えても a 王のせっこ Like, eventually, this cutscene will, will explain what in the world Rajaki is up to. Wow, spoilers. This kind of bugged me because didn't Raj say at the beginning, I'm a daughter of Lord Enma? Yeah, she basically did. <laughs> this is the weirdest dialogue. <laughs> it's a really bizarre kind of disjointed exchange. <laughs> Thanks to the blessing of this mountain, <laughs> which we are married. I've said this yet, but I love Raj's sweet ass hair. It's fantastic. Yep. <laughs> Rajaki's a pretty sweet girl, really awesome design, but she also kind of fucked up. So now she's looking for a bunch of treasures that she just up and lost. Raj being absent minded, you say? What I like about this is that one of the treasures she found is the uh, Lucky Mallet, which is the big explanation of why she's capable of doing her other forms. Hmm. But yeah, this is basically the story of Raj saying, I'm sorry, Dad, I'll fix it, don't worry! Amazingly enough, we actually um, fight Rai Jin in the main plot, so this is a cute little nod to that. I, I, I'm glad Raj is just showing off to her buddy Rai Jin. Because why not? Well, it's kind of like a big sister, little sister thing, so naturally. Uh, why do you still have your knives? I gotta give credit to the voice actor of this character. Doing that voice must really hurt. Yeah, and yeah that, that sort of thing tends to kind of wear on your throat. Luckily, she doesn't have ter terribly many voice lines, so it's probably part of it. I forget what ever like there was. I remember hearing a story of a voice actor that did a voice for so long that it ruined her voice, and she can Excel Saga. Actually, that's right. You told me about this. Yes, um, the first voice voice actress they had for the the English dub of Excel Saga was trying to emulate the Japanese voice actress, and she ended up destroying her voice in the process. Yeah, I feel like that's something that would have happened to the voice actor of that uh, mountain hag with the voice she was doing. Yeah, but that was also very clearly meant to be short-term, thankfully. Also, we learned a little bit of history about Seikichi here. <laughs> he wanted to be a doctor, but sadly he couldn't. Finally, we can feel bad for him. Oh, oh, Raj, stop being adorable. You say we could be, feel sorry for Seikichi. Not really. <laughs> God damn it. This is why I like this. This is why I love this DLC. It's like, oh, feel sorry for Seikichi. No, don't. Shit. Come to find out he's emotionally manipulative. Oh, well. So, here's some more of the bullshit he pulls to get out of this. I don't know how things work in Japan, but I get the feeling if you leave your soul anywhere, you shouldn't be able to function. I mean, to be fair, Raj is more dense than a fruitcake. Let's see yeah. I keep forgetting that little thing, but yeah. <laughs> I just saw that line, I'm like, oh, come the fuck on. 
I Back in the bag, monkey bone. Get in the bag! That <laughs> bag is the best. <laughs> I just, I love the animation for him getting into the bag. It's just so perfect. Now, I left this in because I wanted to be clever when I was recording this. I didn't use any save points. And with the DLC, you basically take a lap, so what you're supposed to do is go back where you started and do a dungeon, but since I didn't use any of the save points, I can't use the warp item. So I had oh to Oh my fucking god. So I had to walk back. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> See you folks next episode. <laughs> See ya.